Have you ever had the experience where you get a whiff of something familiar, and then you're suddenly catapulted from whatever you were doing to a time in your past, and now you're taking a trip down memory lane? Well, I sure have. And one of those smells that are so familiar to me is honeysuckle. And I can't help but think about summertime as a child, building forts and playing tag. Anyways, today we're going to take a quick look at the relationship between smell and memory and why it's so powerful. So as part of the human senses, hearing, seeing, balance, where your body and limbs are located in space and touch, the olfactory sense or sense of smell differs from some of the others in that like taste, but unlike touch, it's considered a chemical sense because it's directly activated by chemicals. Whereas another sense, such as seeing, is activated by a physical stimulus, such as light hitting the eye. What we smell depends on what substances are floating about in the air at detectable levels. So think of freshly baked cookies. In order to smell those cookies, actual part of the cookie must be available in the air in the form of odorant molecules, which must then enter the nose with the help of an airstream. Within the nose, there is the navel cavity where very high within the cavity, the olfactory mucosa is housed. So those cookie molecules come into contact with the mucosa where olfactory receptor neurons are located throughout. These neurons contain their own specialized molecules called olfactory receptors, so the receivers of smell information. And these receptors are very sensitive to odorant molecules. In this case, our cookie odorant molecule. So our cookie odorant molecules activate these olfactory receptors, creating an electrical signal or charge. The electrical signal or charge makes its way directly to the olfactory bulb, thus activating the bulb. Once our cookie odorant signal activates the bulb, the signal is then transmitted to the piriform cortex or the primary olfactory cortex, the amygdala and limbic system, and the orbital frontal cortex where the secondary olfactory cortex is housed. The way our cookie odorant signal is transmitted within the brain is unique to this particular sense compared with the other senses. Our other senses, just like olfactory sense, have specialized cortical areas. In the case of smell, we mentioned, for instance, the primary olfactory cortex. However, if, for example, we consider our sense of hearing, while it also has a corresponding cortical area, the primary auditory cortex, an auditory signal isn't transmitted to other areas simultaneously, as is the case with our sense of smell, but transmits from one area to another in sequential order, meaning one by one. Also, all the other sense signals, such as an auditory signal, pass through the thalamus prior to reaching their specialized cortex. Unlike an auditory signal or other sense signals, our olfactory signal, in this case our cookie odorant signals, pass through the amygdala, which is associated with emotion, and the hippocampus, which is associated with memory, both of which reside in the limbic system. So let's back up. When we discuss memory, especially within the context of olfaction and memory, we're really focusing on retaining learned information. Keep in mind, learning is both an active and a passive process. Scientists have identified different types of memory, and these types typically fall under two umbrella terms, non-declarative or implicit memory. This memory type is experience memory. So for instance, I've done gymnastics for years, so the body shapes I've learned via practice have been stored in my brain, specifically within the striatum, cerebellum, and the amygdala. So falling under our second umbrella term is declarative memory. Declarative memory regards factual information, such as recalling all the elements listed in the periodic table, and events, such as recalling the boring lecture I sat through last week during my neurochemistry class. Declarative memory is considered explicit memory, because this kind of memory is acquired through a more active learning process. Areas of the brain most associated with declarative memory are the medial temporal lobe, located in the cerebrum, and the diencephalon, which comprises thalamus, hypothalamus, epithalamus, and subthalamus, located in the cerebellum. Emotions, or the feelings we have and experience, are very powerful tools we use to communicate with each other, to understand situations, and to enhance or even suppress memory consolidation 
aka creating memories. The concept of emotions enhancing certain memories isn't that surprising, as we're more likely to remember an event if we have an emotional reaction or connection to said event. There's also the emotional processing theory of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, in which an intense emotion, such as fear, overrides or even prevents the ability to process other information. In the case of PTSD, dysfunction in declarative memory, that kind of memory that captures facts and events has been noted. So we have an example where emotion can actually negatively impact memory. The brain areas most responsible for expressing and experiencing emotions is the limbic system, which among various other structures, include the amygdala, hippocampus, and our olfactory bulb. Once you know where our odorant signal first hits the brain, the olfactory bulb, may begin to realize why there's such a strong association between smell and memory. If you recall, the olfactory bulb lies within the limbic system among our emotion, amygdala, and memory, the hippocampus, processing centers. As mentioned, emotion can both suppress and enhance our memories. When our cookie odorant signal reaches our emotional processing areas, particularly the amygdala, that odorant can enhance a memory surrounding the event. According to some researchers, the hippocampus may not even be that crucial for the smell emotion memory link to occur, as indicated in case studies where people have sustained damage to their hippocampus, resulting in general memory loss. But their smell memory has remained intact, meaning that a certain smell was still capable of triggering a memory, despite experiencing general memory loss. Further, the emotional aspect of smell memory may account for why memory surrounding smell over other senses tends to last much longer and is less susceptible to decaying over time and may even be available and accessible years after the smell emotion memory link was initially created. So if you ever come across the smell of freshly baked cookies and it takes you back to a time where you were helping a parent or guardian bake cookies, but probably doing a pretty poor job of it because you were mm, five, you may think the placement of your olfactory bulb within the limbic system. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to our channel. And if you have any suggestions for the next video you'd like to see, please leave comments below. And thank you for watching. Now you can quote it. <laughs>